All right, a Brusa Core 1, a kit from the MK4S. Okay, so MK4S, this is even from MK4. So I had an MK4 at first, then converted to MK4S. Now it's the Core 1. Um, all the problems I have, they are not all resolved, but a few of them are. <coughs> so I went here into settings. There's system and then factory reset and resetting settings and calibration, hard reset, USB with firmware is needed, right? So you need your USB stick here. Um, I also did not use the Pusa one because that one sucks. I got a new one. This is, I don't know, a SunDisk 8 gigabyte. I like it because it's so short, you know. Because in that, make sure you have the firmware on there before you do this hard reset, okay? Then, of course, it goes through all those calibrations and stuff, you know. Oh, I didn't want to start printing it. Okay. Um, filament, I have PETG in there, out of a dryer goes in there, so that's no big deal. Um, let's go into control and turn the motors off. Disable motors. So now we can pull this whole thing up. Here. Now, <clears throat> what happens is that this one makes contact over here and over there. So let me put this in the middle. Okay. So when it comes home, here, it makes contact there. And when it comes home, it makes contact there on this side. And you need to make sure that it does it both at the same time. There's people out there saying that this bracket here is not in a 90 degree angle. They take it all out and correct this angle and the vise with a hammer or whatever they do. I would say not necessary because this bends so easy. You can put something in between here and then pull on the left side. It will bend that thing. The same on the other side. You can bend this back and forth. It's a very soft metal. So loosen up the tension on your belts. Fully loose. And then see when you come back here that it touches really both at the same time. If not, bend it left and right until both of them really connect at the same time. This still does. Okay, and then we're going in here to um, check out how tight our belts are. Um, when we tension this, Hear that and then come in here different sound right you can come over here and here all this different sounding like it's nuts so how do you do this right This is where you have the most space. But what is the frequency now, right? Now let me try this. Let me try to get in here with my camera. I don't know if I get everything in here. On the phone, I have the app Spectroid. Spectroid. It's really horrible. Oh. 
One, one hundred. I think it's exactly one hundred. There. And then, <coughs> yeah, this one, the lower one. Ninety-seven. Okay, so one is one hundred, the other one is ninety-seven. Um, well, yeah. I didn't mind so much what exact frequency it has. I minded that when this goes back, that it touches both sides at the same time, and when you have one belt too tight, this thing will move. Like it will bend. So make sure you tension both slowly, both together at the same time and uh, make them similar, the tension on both. But make sure when they are both tensioned that really this piece here and that piece touch at the same time, okay? So we are at 97 there, okay. then. I got myself here a syringe with the grease. It's a blunt needle syringe, okay? That makes it easier to apply. And I'm gonna grease it up here. This nut, this nut greasing, this nut up. This whole rod should have grease on it. The same here on the back, there. Up here, okay, so there's a bit of a problem. Uh, because grease doesn't do much there, so I used oil. There's specific oils for this. I want to leave you hanging. Um, I have to check what oil I have here. I'll show you in a second. Mm, there's also this carriage you move back and forth. Mm, there's spots on there where you inject grease. On the sides, in between here, there's little holes in there. And you're supposed to um, inject a certain amount. I don't know if I can show this here. I don't, I certainly don't want to inject, but um, you go in here, there's a hole there. You can see the hole? That's where you inject, like, very little grease over there. And then, if this moves over to the other side here, there's a hole down there. There's really a hole here. When you feel it, there. There's a hole. No, oh, I would love to show this with my camera. Oh, man. So in here is a hole. You can see me. And of course, the camera doesn't focus right. So you don't want to have grease on anything. In here is the hole. That's where you grease. Okay. And this blunt needle thing is really nice to use for that. And so, yeah, you're greasing the whole thing over here. Okay. <clears throat> now, when I go in here and go to Auto Home, let me see if this works or not, right? Um, problematic, of course, is when you have filament hanging out already there. So, keeping this clean is something to consider, even if you're homing. Alright. Look at that, it just got stuck there. Wait, it doesn't like this, right? This will give you arrows. It would be funny if it doesn't. Well, it doesn't, see? It's okay now. Hmm. Let's start at simple print. And we see how this starts up. It wants to have the ventilation grill open for airflow. And of course, I disabled the door contact here. There is a setting in here. Where you can disable that, so I leave the door open. Especially for this video. The... Saturn build plate has the text uh, printed on top. It's very uneven. If it does a nozzle clean on that, uh, it has this unevenness and that 
throws it off, I noticed. Um, the same for the homing, the bad. Um, the font here is confusing it, looks like. So that is the problem. Like the nice non-satin sheet is fine, as well as some aftermarkets without the print there, where it's flat. That works much better. And that is basically what I did to get this to work better. And the prints were always good. See, this is, looks like on this set sheet is a little used. And that's how it prints on top. Look at it. See what it does. So it went here to the right temperatures. It's heating up the bed now. Or oh, tying the home thing, that's also possible. See the um, filament here is stuck here. Yeah? yeah, just take it off now. That's why it's always good to have those tweezers. All right, so now it does a bad heating. take time again that takes so much time everything here before it starts really takes time uh, the chamber heating bad heating and all this stuff for that you have to close it of course otherwise you don't get the the chamber hot here this is a little bit longer video now because um, if i want to show how this works the video is a little longer of course and this is like the most annoying with this printer, the time it takes to get this thing ready. Nozzle is super hot now. And then the bed is still at 72, we need 85, so I do PETG. That's what it needs. The next step it will do is a nozzle cleaning and it will most likely fail on that one. It does like to fail. I also noticed, um, the printer is cold now, so I start this up cool. That works much better than if it's already saturated with heat and the whole thing is hot. That makes it more difficult. Let's see where we are. We are at 80, so we need like five more degrees on the bed. It's not heating up good. It will go there eventually. <laughs> 84. eighty five. Now it does absorbing heat, meaning so it the heated bed tries to um, heat the sheet, get the heat in there, right? We're gonna skip this. So now we do E heating, that means the nozzle now will heat up to 170. To 170, that's what it uses for the cleaning of the nozzle. You just hope that your nozzle is clean. You can go in there with a brush and clean your nozzle. Of course, it's more effective if you have a hotter nozzle, right? So yeah, it was almost at 170. Let's close the door again. So now we do a nozzle cleaning. Let's see how that goes. So if everything works fine, it's like four steps. If it's not cool, then it takes longer. If it takes longer, then you're uh, out of luck. I don't know what to say, it's really annoying, that part. Now we're already 14 minutes into this without having anything printed. Look how long it takes. If nozzle cleaning is successful, it will go to some calibration thing to uh, probing, right? So it tries to nozzle clean again, it's repeated. 
Let's see what it does. There's only two options. Either it is able to finish the nozzle clean or not. And if not, then the bed will go down and it will complain about it. The bed has to go down so that you have uh, space to clean it. Uh, yeah, that was successful. Okay. So now we're probing. <coughs> probing always works fine. So I haven't had any issues there. Sometimes it probes twice. And once it does the probing, then the printer does print. There is uh, <clears throat> nothing that holds it back, I would say. Um, and the print is also okay after that, right? The only thing what can happen to you now is that the first layer doesn't stick. And that's more a setting thing than anything else. Now, this is a very sticky plate, right? So it's a um, smooth PEI sheet here where they say you shouldn't print PETG with, but um, I don't have a bad experience with it. It comes loose if you bend the plate good. Um, we have long pieces, what we print here. <coughs> so if I print a piece this long and I bend the bed, this comes loose, right? It doesn't stick that much there. Let's see what's going on here. Probing points, two of 20. Now it says it does 20 probing points, but we saw it did only three, and then it goes to heating, right? So now we heat up the nozzle to our first layer temperature. In my case, for my filament, I have <coughs> the Creality PETG in here. There was a sale on Amazon, you get two for $24, I think. So they have the sale where you get two of those rolls for a great price and uh, I use those. I just have to adjust a little bit the filament profile. You know. And then also I don't have the um, HT um, nozzle in here, okay? So that's what I don't have. I have uh, the diamond back in here. So when you want to print a braces uh, stuff, then you have the diamond nozzle in there. Oh, there it goes. So now we are printing the first layer. And see how it's stuck to it. Pretty good. Yeah. Oh. So yeah, so the print will be successful. Uh, I can tell you already. This is going to print through and... Um, there I'm going to end my video here. It's long enough and if you had problems with putting this, this together from a kit then you're well aware of how much time it takes and it was very well worth watching this video you hear the noise that's how loud it is or should be it's not too loud um, yeah what can I say like this was a very successful boot up start up for this machine I have to say it was horrible in the beginning but uh, we are here now. So, yeah, I hope you liked it. Um, write your comments and then we see what happens.